So fetal monitoring, right? Or fetal assessment in the prenatal uh, period. First of all, fetal monitoring means display the fetal heart rate and uterus activities, mo activities. Monitor the uterine activity, frequency, duration of contraction. So in the prenatal care or during the newborn, I mean, when the mother is ready to give a bath or delivery or the third stage of labor, we could monitor the fetus, especially fetal heart rate. At the same time, we could monitor the met uterine activities, means contraction of the uterus, relaxation of the uterus, frequency and intensity of contraction. So monitor the fetal heart rate in relation to the maternal contraction, right? And also we will count the fetal heart rate. We will count the fetal heart rate. Every book agree with you, the normal fetal heart rate is 110 to 160 beat per minute. Some books said is 120 to 160 bit per minute. Hmm. So now another terminology is called external fetal monitoring, internal fetal monitoring and external fetal monitoring, right? There are two terminology. In case of internal fetal monitoring, we, I mean, the scalp, electrode attached to the presenting part of the fetus and monitor the fetal heart rate. This is called internal, right? In the external fetal monitoring, basically non-invasive technique or perform with the use of a device is called to uh, toco transducer, right? By this, and also we can use the color dropper transducer. You can see this is the mother, and the mother, I mean, under this external motor of the fetus, using the toco transducer, this is the device put it over the abdomen. And this is the monitor where the fetal heart rate contraction of the uterus or duration of contraction, everything will be visible, except the force of contraction, except the force of contraction. So, so here showing troco transducer, you see, an ultrasound guided, right? So external, uh, Another terminology is very important to discuss with you. It's called external cephalic version or shortly called ECV. That external cephalic version also ultrasound guided. So you see the ultrasound guided transducer here. So sometimes ultrasound guide manipulation of the abdominal wall to turn a baby in a pitch or transverse position to the normal cervix presentation. So fetal monitoring, external fetal monitoring, another two technique we usually follow, this is called Leopold maneuver, right? And flex board sometimes asks, sometimes asks, what are the uh, Leopold maneuver, right? Leopold maneuver are performed to determine on which side a uh, fetal bag is located and the ultrasound transducer is then placed over this area and also 
can see the baby's position or can palpate. In Leopold maneuver, palpation of the uterus through the abdomen to determine the presenting part of the fetus or fetal lie, fetal attitude, also the point of maximal impulses, shortly called PMI, or used to determine the placement of external transducer for fetal monitoring. So if NCLEX board asks a question, what are the Leopold maneuvers? You can answer, this is the procedure to palpate of the uterus through the abdomen to determine the presenting part of the fetus or fetal lie position, fetal attitude, also position of the maximal impulses. Leopold maneuver used to determine the placement of external transducer for fetal monitoring. So this is the uh, transducer. So go back in the picture. This is the process, right? Monitoring we use. And also, what are the expected findings of fetal heart rate, external findings? So allow the client to ensuring the comfortable position, first of all, during this procedure. Avoid the Venakeva compression, hmm? or it is other name is called maternal supine hypotension syndrome. Hypotension syndrome. So I said when we checking the or, or, or when we fetal assessment or Leopold maneuver, the expected findings for fetal heart rate, basically we count the fetal heart rate that already you know this is 120 to 160 beat per minute. And also moderate variability we can check or we can check the declaration or declaration, present or absent. Or also we can check there are no variable or any let declaration is there. During this procedure, it is very important to check the mother posture or position. We said comfortable position. Why it is important to avoid the venakeval compression. The terminology we use is called maternal supine hypotension syndrome. So basically during the third trimester, it is more common. And clicks board could ask you, what is supine hypotension syndrome? It is occur as a result of compression on the inferior vena cava. And when compression of the inferior vena cava and aorta decrease the venous return to the heart. In this picture, step by step explain, compression inferior vena cava and aorta and decrease the venous return to the heart when venous return is go down, decrease the uteroplacental perfusion. Means oxygen supply radius, both can lead to the fetal distress. So how we can avoid it? So tell mother in left lateral positioning. Another one is internal fetal monitoring, right, internal. So internal fetal monitoring, it is an invasive procedure. And repair the rupture of the membrane and attaching an electrode 
to the presenting part of the fetus. Electrode presenting part, basically scalp electrode attached to the presenting part of the fetus to monitor the fetal heart rate by internal fetal monitoring. We can be used with intrauterine pressure catheter, also allowing for early and accurate assessment for fetal heart rate or uterine contraction by internal fetal monitoring, my friend. Average pressure on contraction is usually 50 to 80 millimeter of mercury. Hmm? So continuation, here they said, uh, we, by internal fetal monitoring, we can accurate assessment of fetal heart rate, right? Everybody know that the fetal heart rate normal is 110 to 160. If we found fetal heart rate less than 110, it is bradycardia. If we found fetal heart rate is greater than 160 beat per minute for 10 minutes or longer, it is trachycardia, fetal trachycardia, right? We have to observe the patient. So if bradycardia or trachycardia is occur, change the position of the mother, mother, admin the oxygen and check the mother vital sign. In the same time, we could notify the registered nurse or healthcare provider. And also, uh, it is uh, important, let me share with you, there are some disadvantages because of internal fetal monitoring. What it is? So the disadvantage of internal fetal monitoring, membrane must be ruptured and cervix dilated more than two centimeters. And also presenting part descend to use internal monitor. The risk of injury to the fetus is the disadvantage. Also risk of infection to the mother and baby because of internal fetal monitoring. By this, we also find out the variabilities, okay? So what is variability abilities? Variabilities means fluctuation of the baseline of fetal heart rate, right? So, or we can say the variability is the fluctuation of the fetal heart rate over the time. Short, short, it is called short-term variability and long-term. Short-term variability means the bit-to-bit -bit fluctuation of the heart rate Long-term variability means fluctuation of the heart rate over several minutes or time. So absence of variability or undetected variability is considered non-reassuring. So here the temporary decrease the variability can occur when the fetus in sleep. But if the variability is prolonged long term or decrease the variability can cause because of fetal hypoxemia or acidosis or any certain medication, right? So the fetal monitoring or variabilities we can categorize by, I mean, here we said the acceleration or decicleration. So again, my friend, I said the fetal monitoring means normal fetal heart rate 120 to 160 beat per minute. If it is not in this range up or down, 
that times we can say variabilities. So the variabilities, basically it is called declaration here, declaration. Before to understand the declaration, I want to share with you what is declaration. If we understand what is declaration, it would be easy to understand the abnormalities or declaration. Acceleration here. This is a temporary increase the heart rate at least 50 beat above the baseline and lasting least than 50 second. So usually it is occur with fetal movement or maybe non periodic or periodic. Also may occur uterine contraction vaginal examination or mild cord compression. So acyclation is nothing bad. It may be possible to change. It is a bit temporary. So acyclation is a temporary increase the fetal heart rate above the baseline. And it is, we have to reassuring Acyclation is not fluctuating or not lead to declaration or no intervention necessary. If little bit fluctuate, we observing and we do not know, need to take any action or intervention. If the fetals has a bradycardia, means I mean, go back a little bit. If fetus has a bradycardia, means fetal heart rate less than 110 beat per minute for 10 seconds, sorry, 10 minutes or longer. So fetal bradycardia due to cause, due to uteroplacental insufficiency, one of the cause, or umbilical cord, umbilical cord prolapse or uterine hypotension, I mean, or maternal hypotension, I'd say, or umbilical cord prolapse or anesthetic medication. This is the cause of bradycardia, right? So if your patient has a bradycardia, what, what we could do? First of all, disconnected oxytocin or place, place the mother in side lying position. Admin oxygen and notify the provider. What is we wrote here? What about the fetal trachycardia? If the fetal heart rate more than 160 beat per minute or more than 10 minutes or longer, Fetal trachycardia due to maternal infection or if mother has addicted to cocaine, any additive su substance abuse, or if mother is dehydrated or dehydration, they develop the trachycardia. If mother have trachycardia, we could admin antipyretics, oxygen, and IV fluid, right? Now go the desiccation, right? So desiccation is three types. One is early desiccation, late desiccation, and variable desiccation, right? So I want to give you one small example. Like you want to go your office. You started from the morning and when you drive the car, you have to accelerate your car, right? And sometimes you need to push on the back and you have to, I mean, make a balance 
and you will drive and by time you will speed up sometimes speed down but finally if you want to go to your office you have to be speed up a little bit right now others you will be late so when in the delivery process during the delivery during the contraction with the time and intensity baby's head will be down towards the bath canal little little it will be come out if it is not come out problem start you will be late to get your office if your car is not accelerated if your car is decelerated you will not get your office in time right so the early decelerated means slowing the fetal heart rate with start of contraction so early decelerated due to the compression of baby's head from contraction or no intervention is and also early decelerated we do not need any kind of intervention just observation again i said in early decelerated the we do not need any intervention we only inter um, observe the patient let me read it my friend decrease the fetal heart rate below the baseline the rate at the lowest point of the decelerated usually remain greater than 100 beat per minute occur during the contraction as the fetal head is pressed again the women's pelvis or soft tissues not associated with the fetal compression or require no intervention the let decelerated also slower the fetal heart rate after the contraction but the early decelerated slow the fetal heart rate with start of contraction hmm? and also the they said non reassuring pattern this f reflect impaired placental exchange or utero placental insufficiency and decrease the fall in the heart rate intervention for let decelerated what are the intervention right so the major cause of let decelerated it is called utero placental insufficiency intervention means we take the action what action give oxygen iv fluid lateral positioning uh, discharge the piton and prepare mother for c section or cesarean section right what else uh, the early decelerated the cause is a head compression but let decelerated are uh, utero placental insufficiency another terminology we use it is called variable variable decelerated the cause is cord compression so variable decelerated is a transient variable slowing the fetal heart rate variable decelerated is occur due to umbilical cord compression hmm? if we find out the baby or mother have this problem place the patient in neatest positioning or reposition from side to side also we could disconnect the oxytocin admin oxygen 
let me read it. The causes by condition that restrict the flow through the umbilical cord. Maybe non-periodic or significant when fetal heart rate is repeatedly decreased less than 70 beat per minute. So definitely we need some action. What the action? If the variable desiccation occur, the nurse should change the positioning of the mother, give them oxygen, disconnect the oxytocin, other name is oxytocin is called piton. If notif and also notify the healthcare provider. Hmm? In this picture, the picture number one showing this is the umbilic uh, uh, placenta attached to the abdominal wall, and this is the umbilical cord. Everything is so smooth, so wonderful. A mother is waiting to welcome this baby. It's a normal anatomy. But in the second picture, unlucky baby, placenta's position is okay. It is attached to the wall, but umbilical cord is shorter and also umbilical cord wrap over the neck, right? Is called cord compression. If any baby like this abnormal condition, cord compression, they can face variable desiccation, right? So if it is too much wrap over there, how fair head of the baby came out through the bath canal, it would be late. And here a picture showing the placenta, it is normal in the posterior abdominal wall of the uterus. But here the placenta just close to the orifice of bath canal, right? And this is called placenta previa. Here, the three uh, causes of desiccation. The first one, head compression, right? You see, head compression. The second one is uteroplacental insufficiency. And third one is cord prolapse. So the first picture here, head compression, or we call early desiccation, right? So this is the mother uterus, and this is the showing the contraction of the uterus. So in that case, head compression or early desiccation, slowing the fetal heart rate with start of contraction of the uterus. Due to the compression of the baby's head from contraction. But again, I want to tell you, because of this problem, no intervention is necessary, only observation. The uteroplacental insufficiency or let desiccation, right? It is occurred due to the uteroplacental insufficiency and they cause let desiccation. In this baby, slowing the fetal heart rate after contraction has started and prolong the return to the baseline. And again, it is occurred due to uteroplacental insufficiency. So if mother, I mean, this problem, what are the action we could take? First of all, place the mother inside lying position, admin IV fluid, disconnect oxytocin, administer oxygen, palpate the uterus for tracheostole or notify healthcare provider, right? And also we hope we could, could prepare the mother or we have to be ready for C-section. 
The last one here is called uteroplacental compression or variable desaccularization because of head compression, right? So this position is transient or variable slowing the fetal heart rate. Why? Because this cord is shorter and sometimes cord is wrapped on the neck or due to the umbilical cord compression, we say it. What are the um, management? Tell mother in neatest positioning or reposition side to side or give them oxygen, disconnect the oxytocin. Also prepare the uh, mother for C-section. Some book wrote, it is good to tell mother candle bark position. Here I left something for you, how to remember, okay? How to remember. So the variability means fetal monitor and normal fetal heart rate not within this limit. Desiccation early, late and variable. The early desiccation cause head compression. We do not need any intervention, just observation. The late desiccation cause uteroplacental insufficiency. This is the action we have to take. Oxygen, IV fluid, lateral position, disconnect piton, C-section. Variable cause is cord compression. Action is lateral position, oxygen, and C-section. This is something we left, we, it can help us to memorize. This is called Veljop, V-E-A-L-C-H-O-P, right? Veljop means B stand for variable. E stand for early. Desiccularation, A stand for acyclaration, and L stand for let desiccularation. So you organized B, E, A, L. On the same time, same side by side but parallel, you can write C, H, O, P. C for cord compression. H, H stand for head compression. O stand for, okay, normal. P stand for uteroplacental insufficiency. So variable desiccation because of cord compression and early desiccation occur because of head compression and acyclaration is a normal, Okay, we do not need any action, just observation. And L stands for let desiccularization. And we have to, uh, an underlying cause of the uteroplacental insufficiency. Right? And what are the action? Lateral position, give oxygen, and C section. It is easy way to remember desiccularization type, underlying cause, and management.